Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. In this one I would like to talk about motherboards and GPU pass-through. If you are only planning to run a single virtual machine with a single graphics card attached to it, then choosing the right motherboard or platform doesn't really matter that much. Anything reasonably modern should be able to handle that. But on the other end, if you want to run multiple virtual machines, each with their own graphics card at the same time, choosing the right motherboard and the right platform might be very beneficial to you. So to get started, your motherboard has to support VTD and VTX on the Intel side and SVM and uh, IOMMU on the AMD side but the names might be different depending on your motherboard manufacturer. Okay, so knowing what we know, let's uh, try to look at the best-selling motherboard on Newegg for the AM4 platform. It's this ASRock B450, and because it's a micro ATX, it will only have uh, a limited number of PCI Express slots. So right here, we can see it only has two full-size PCI Express slots and uh, that limits us because probably if you use a regular Ryzen you know three five or seven uh, you won't have a built-in iGPU so you will have to use an use a dedicated graphics card and you will lose one PC Express slot to that so with uh, this slot probably taken by the graphics card you are left with the bottom slot right here for your uh, virtual machines graphics card. And let's try to get a bigger picture if we can. Yeah, well, they're all about the same. Okay, so we, what we can see here is that this is only a by four PCI Express slot. So it's a full size physical slot but electrically, it's only by four. We can see the pins right here. And uh, so that graphics card there you would be using for your virtual machine would only be running at by four. So that would limit the performance. That's not ideal, it would work. Then we have a by one slot right here, which we could use for, uh, let's say a USB card and uh, I just looked at the manual and the BIOS uh, uh, options. So it has SVM mode, I saw IOMMU mode somewhere down there. What else? I also saw this. And right here, ACS enable. Uh, so that generally would mean, maybe, I mean, it's a, it's a guess, I don't have this motherboard. But chances are we might actually be able to get this uh, by one slot, even though it probably goes through the chipset to be in its own IOMMU group. And we might be able to assign this to a virtual machine. Again, that's just me guessing. It might work, it might not, but hey, that's a possibility. But uh, the price for this motherboard is great, but I, I wouldn't choose something like that if I had the money for my uh, virtual machine setup. Uh, so let's see, let's see uh, what I chose, what, what am I using? So here we have the X470 Aorus by Gigabyte and it's a full ATX motherboard. So it has uh, three PCI Express slots available. Uh, they are by 16 physical and uh, what most gigabyte motherboards allow you to do is to select which slot contains your boot GPU. So this uh, bottom slot is uh, connected to the chipset and uh, does, does not take, I believe, it doesn't use one of your 16 allocated uh, PCI Express lanes to the CPU. So what you can do is uh, put the graphics card in the bottom slot and use it for the host and then you have these two slots where you can 
plug in at least one graphics card and let's say if you let's say you decide to run only one virtual machine you plug your graphics card into the topmost slot you want to be that you want that one to be your uh, virtual graphics card that you pass through and here you have your host GPU that one graphics card unless you plug something into the bottom slot I mean the middle slot will be running in by 16 uh, speed and so you will take the full advantage of uh, what that graphics card can offer the difference between by uh, by 16 and by 8 isn't that great you probably wouldn't notice it in uh, real use but uh, hey why not if it's if it's possible it's it's nice to do so if you decide to run two virtual machines at the same time you can populate both of these by a graphics card and uh, boot again your host boots off of this one so here you are getting your output and you could be running two virtual machines each with their own graphics card on this motherboard since i'm running this motherboard let me reboot and uh, let's go over the bios settings so here we have the bios and what we can see is initial display output pci express slot one two or three so we can select which one we want to use also a very nice feature is amd cds acs enable and most most amd motherboards have it so that's not a problem uh, yes, especially if you update the bios you will you will have something like this acs enabled so it basically means your io mmu groups will look much better than they would by default uh, most devices at most many devices will be in their own io mmu group as opposed to being bunched together with who knows what so that's another uh, benefit and uh, yeah so uh, that's uh, those are some features uh, that i find pretty useful okay let's take a look at something more interesting let's say we want to build a mini itx gpu pass-through build this uh, z390 azrog uh, motherboard which also has a thunderbolt port would allow us to have an intel uh, processor with a built-in graphics used for our host and a regular dedicated graphics card for the virtual machine which we could pass through uh, additionally this board also has a thunderbolt port let's go here and this is actually a thunderbolt port not only usb type c so with a thunderbolt port what you can do if you have a thunderbolt enabled monitor you can actually use the monitor as a kvm switch of sort uh, your host would be output through the thunderbolt to the monitor and when you switch the input on the monitor to let's say uh, hdmi or uh, display port and you also have a usb cable connected to the monitor your mouse and keyboard that's plugged into the monitor would switch between the host over the thunderbolt cable and the virtual machine over the usb cable running to the monitor so that's one nice feature that you would be able to do if you had a mini itx build like this and lastly we have platforms like the x299 by intel with up to 48 pci express lanes trx40 by amd with 56 pci express lanes and uh, the ones on the trx 40 are fourth generation pci express same as the x570 on the am4 so we can end up with configurations like these uh, two pci express uh, graphics cards running in by 16 and additional two in by
by 8 plus some uh, m.2 devices again running at by 4 on Intel side uh, that would allow us two PCI Express uh, by 16 uh, graphics card plus some again up to two in by eight but generation three right uh, configuration so pretty much almost the same on this board but we are trading at the trade off is uh, some m.2 slots uh, that won't be connected to the cpu but would have to go through the chipset possibly so uh, different motherboard same setup again on trx 40 uh, there are some boards on the consumer side uh, like this workstation board by asus a z390 uh, platform but uh, well this one has four pci express by 16 slots and you can run them in uh, configuration like this four by eight but boards like that have a PLX chip and uh, they, the chip itself would connect over, let's say by, eight, uh, by uh, 16 uh, configuration and then these cards run off of that chip. So it runs, works as a switch of sorts. Uh, so it's not, they don't have that bandwidth at the same time so in practice it shouldn't make a difference but in theory if you try to max out all these by eight connections they wouldn't you wouldn't actually get that bandwidth but that's rather theoretical and on the x299 side again we can see monstrosity like this with uh, seven pci express expansion slots and uh, all of them are by eight and the first one is in by 16 but again there is a plx chip involved so the reason for these uh, high-end desktop boards is generally uh, in these days is the number of pci express slots and lanes available on the trx side it's also the number of cores you don't care about the number of pci express lanes you would probably end up with something like uh, Ryzen 3950, which gives you fourth generation, would be perfectly fine for running one virtual machine and would probably end up being cheaper than running a X299 uh, board with a equivalent processor. So yeah, the only reason for these high-end boards, especially on the Intel side, is the number of PCI Express lanes. Other than that, you would probably want to save your money. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this was informative and I'll see you in the next video.